chain smoke your problems away. Smoke Pit Fairy Tales Part 4 Chapter 12 Stay away from chicks like that. India Company gathered around the Oriole a few afternoons later. The Americans captured the heavily damaged Russian frigate shortly after the move to Mars. All of the electronics were stripped and it wasn't much more than a hull. It was situated on the north end of Camp Castle and used as an on-ship training area by the Marines. Thatch led his fire team kicking into the officers' cabins, pouring the Marines in, hooking around the doors and firing their simunition rounds at plastic pop-up targets. The ship didn't have power and was pitch black below deck. The Marines were forced to rely on their headgear to navigate. They were in their spacesuits even though they were on the planet, but they meant to train as they fought. First Squad cleared officer country and headed down through the bridge and the command deck. The green glow of their night vision dimly illuminated the passage through the ship. They bound, crawled, and crept through the steel monster. The halls opened up under the mess deck. Lance Corporal Scott led the column. She took a quiet step into the room and hooked left. PFC Vickers hooked right. The squad took cover behind tables and columns as they slithered through the deck. Bam! 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 Fire erupted around them. The Marines were punched with simunition rounds and their suits were stained with the blue paint of the training bullets. Cease fire! Cease fire! That's called through his comm system. He was frustrated. It didn't register to him what he'd missed. How could he be so complacent? Turn on the lights! His Marines all turned on their flashlights on their rifles. Alright, who killed us? Thatch heard a con <laughs> cackle through the headset. Don't worry about it, Thatch. This place is a kill zone. Second squad emerged from behind the tables on the far side of the hall and stepped out of the doors and the surrounding passageways. Yeah. He pointed his light around the room. There was no good way to clear the mess decks. There were too many places to cover for the amount of marines that could fit into it. I don't even know why we came in here. Everyone gets slaughtered in here. You need a platoon to take this room. And another platoon in the passageways around it. Akan called for her marines to regroup outside the ship. But hey, we're the last surviving squads in the company. That nah, doesn't make me feel any better. You got us because I wasn't paying attention to where I was going. Yeah, but your squad took out most of the rest of the company by yourselves. I had my squad set up in an ambush position here all fucking morning. Yeah, all right. India Company returned to the barracks shortly before the sun fell out of the sky. Thatch hung his suit in its case in the closet and put on a pair of jeans, a shirt, his bomber jacket, and his dad's scarf from a war before the war. He had parked the sloop in the parking garage, which was on the other side of the headquarters barracks across the courtyard. He had left his cigarettes in the car and made his way over. Instead of walking all the way back, he stood by the benches on the far end of the barracks to light up. He hadn't smoked since that morning before they left for the training areas, and he didn't feel like waiting any longer. While he was puffing away at his cigarette and watching the stars show up in the evening twilight, Samoom walked out of her barracks. Hey. She smiled at him. Thatch looked at her with a hint of disdain. She hadn't texted him since she stiffed him the other night, but he didn't want to show that he was angry with her. He forced a fake smile. Hello. What's going on? Thatch shook his head and took a drag from his cigarette. Not much, just hanging out. Samoom was wearing lipstick that matched her red coat and a tight pair of jeans. Her long, wavy hair rolled over her shoulders like a river's waters roaring off a cliff. Thatch wanted to be mad at her, but he found it hard to be angry with somebody that beautiful. He reasoned with himself that getting stood up wasn't that big of a deal and decided to drop it from his mind. What about you? I'm going out to eat. Anywhere fun? Well... The attention call blared over the base's speaker system. Samoom and Thatch both stood at attention and faced the flagpole at the center of the base. They were as statues as taps played and the colors were lowered. When Carry On sounded, the two of them faced back to each other. Thatch leaned down and grabbed the cigarette that he'd dropped on the bench. Anyway, I'm going to Fanatics right out of the gate. Samoom continued. That place is a dump. It kind of is. Samoom rolled her head to the side. Wanna go with me? Thatch stared at her for a second, trying to figure her out. But he drew a blank. He didn't know her well enough to even really start. Sure. She led him to a white sedan that looked brand new. Its paint and interior were immaculate. When'd you get this? Thatch asked as he opened the door. Just... Samoom slid into her seat and started the car. She plugged in her phone and put on a ridiculous song about the hypothetical situation of the planet being made of donuts. The car putted out of the parking garage and headed off base. I used to go to this place with one of my friends every Thursday. Fanatics? Yeah. What happened to that? Eh. A friend started playing basketball on Thursdays and couldn't make it anymore. Uh, that's a shame. Thatch tried to sound genuine, but he really didn't care. Yeah. Oh well. I went a couple of times with someone else, but it got weird. What do you mean? Do you know Fergie? In your barracks? Yeah. Thatch thought about it for a moment. Stocky Mexican dude? Yeah. Him. Samum turned the corner towards town. Well... Him and I kinda had a thing a while back then. One day he texted me saying, Come over and fuck me, or I'll never talk to you again. Wait, 
and or or? <laughs> the way that was going, if he had said and, I would have probably done it. <laughs> okay, but that's kind of a fucked up thing to say. It was, which is why I haven't talked to him since then. Thatch couldn't think of anything that he didn't think sounded insulting, so he just nodded his head and said, Okay. Samoon pulled the sedan into Fanatic's parking lot and shut off the car. They got out and sat at a booth in the back. The walls looked like they used to be gray, but had suffered from a decade of negligence. Thatch couldn't figure out how any place could be as dirty as it was. It wasn't like the place was really that old and unkempt. The waiter brought the two of them waters and took their drink and food orders. Samoon took a long look around the room and then got out of her side of the booth and sat by Thatch. He didn't ask her why or what she was doing. She took off the white metal ring she had on her right hand and tied a strand of her plucked hair to it. Let me see your hand. Thatch gave it to her and she placed it on the table and spread his fingers out. Well, what's this? I'm going to see how many kids you're going to have. She stated in all seriousness. What? Samoom held the ring by the hair over Thatch's knuckles. The ring is held over the knuckles. They represent the kids you're going to have. If it spins in a circle, it's going to be a boy. If it swings back and forth... It'll be a girl. Thatch took a deep breath. This is really immature, but fuck it. I've done dumber shit for chicks. I didn't know when to stop. The ring will stop. She moved the ring over his hand. That's a boy. Ah, two girls. And a boy. Does that account for kids that are already alive? <laughs> Do you have kids? No. Oh. And what if I want more than ten kids? Who has more than ten kids? Catholics? The waiter brought their burgers. Samoom thought hers was outstanding. Thatch found his bland and overcooked. The fries were soggy and undersalted. Thatch only ate about a third of his meal. Samoom devoured hers. Before they left, Samoom asked the waiter for a home wrecker. She hid it in the center console while they passed through the front gate. The MPs wouldn't have appreciated the open container in the front of the car. Thatch walked with Samoom to her barracks. In truth, it was actually easier to walk through the headquarters barracks than it was to go around. Thatch wondered why there was only one parking garage for the four barracks that were there. All right. I'll see you around. Samoom said as they walked in the glass double doors at the front. Actually, I have something for you. Do you now? What is it? Something I have in my room. Take me? Thatch led her across the courtyard to his barracks, then to his corner room on the first deck. He flipped on the lights and pulled the painting he'd made for her out from his secretary. When he handed it to Samoom, her eyes popped open and she gasped. Th this is for me? Yeah. Thatch smiled at his work. It had come out well. The ships were silver, the ocean a deep Prussian blue. The night sky was a mix of deep purples, red, and blues, and the stars shining in them were every color of gold and silver Thatch could make. On the left ship, an image of Samoom sat holding a blunderbuss and a sword, wearing a long 18th century coat of teal and gold. This is pretty awesome. How did you know teal is my favorite color? Lucky guess. He had no clue. This is cool. She looked over the painting, then at her phone. But hey... Um, it's, it's getting late, and I've got an early morning, and I, I need to turn in. Okay, see you later. Samoom left the room, and Thatch went to take off his coat. He realized that he hadn't smoked since before he'd left the barracks, and hiked his jacket back up. He went out to the courtyard and pulled out a cigarette. He flicked the lighter open and spun the wheel. Sparks popped up, but no flame lit. He grumbled and looked around for anyone else who might be able to help him. He saw no one, but remembered that he had a bottle of fluid in his car. He tucked the cigarette behind his ear, pocketed the lighter, and headed towards his sloop. He had parked on the third deck of the parking garage, facing the barracks. He filled up the lighter and lit up beside his car. As he smoked, he looked down over the barracks. He saw Samoom walk out of the door with one of the headquarters marines. He knew the man with her, Goody. He was tall, blonde, and relatively handsome. Although Thatch thought he suffered from date rape face, Thatch exhaled a lungs worth of smoke and winced at Samoom and Goody. She had lost the jeans and leather jacket and wore a dark blue shawl with a starfish pattern over a black top and flowing blue skirt. She told me she was going to bed. Thatch's heart sank a little bit. Why would she feel the need to insinuate that she was going to sleep? Thatch watched them load into her car and drive off towards the gate. He smoked a cigarette and tried to figure out what her game plan was. He checked his watch. It was only 20 hundred. He pulled out his phone and texted Stockton to grab a couple of beers and meet him in the smoke pit. By the time Thatch had made it back to his barracks, Stockton was waiting for him. She was in jeans and a black t-shirt. Her hair was slicked back and her silver swastika earrings hung from her lobes. What's up, dude? I don't know. Thatch was still confused about what to think of Samoom. I kinda had a weird night. Yeah? Yeah. Thatch's mouth hung open. He tongued the inside of his fangs while the gears in his head turned. I went out with this chick. Which one? Nazik. Stockton winced. The fat one? She's not fat. Stockton pointed her forehead towards Thatch with raised eyebrows. 
He lit another cigarette and continued. Anyway, we, we go out and we have an all right enough time, and then we come back and I give her that painting I was working on. The one with the ships? Yeah, that. That took another drag. Then she says she has to go to bed, and I'm like, okay. Wait, did she thank you for it? Thatch's mind was stopped in its tracks. He tried to remember if she said anything towards him about it. No. Hmm. Stockton gave a judgmental grunt. But anyway, I, I go out to the parking garage to get lighter fluid, and not five minutes after she left me, she's all dolled up leaving the barracks to someone else. What? Stockton's disgust showed on her face. Fuck that bitch. Yeah, I don't know what to think about it either. Thatch's mind was in a slight despair, but he was still trying to figure out if he should actually be concerned with it or not. No, seriously. Unless you're planning on fucking her and not taking it seriously, then stay the fuck away from that. Thatch rolled his eyes and exhaled. Yeah. No, I saw that painting. You just don't do that. Yeah, but it's not like I'm dating her. Thatch didn't know why, but he felt the need to be defensive. That kind of shit, man? Stockton took a drag off her smoke and shook her head. Stay away from chicks like that. Sup? How you doing? Thanks for listening to another chat episode. Also, we're at a thousand subscribers. I don't remember if I said that last time. But anyway, thank you and welcome new people. I hope you're enjoying the show. But yeah, thanks for tuning in. And thanks to the YouTube members who get these, uh, you know, a little bit early when I post them. And thanks to the Patreon people who get these chapters when I get done with them. I should be starting to edit chapter 27 here soon. Or like as soon as I'm done editing this video and posting it. And I'm probably gonna do tomorrow's too. Not tomorrow's, next week's. So anyway, we're good and head over there on Patreon. Also thanks to everyone who's actually gone out and bought the books. You can get the paperbacks on Amazon. Or you can get the War Chest, which is the box set, and this has got the first six books. And then Mark II's got the... wait. It's a different box, but it's got the last six in it. And then the War Crate is all of them together in a, in, in a wood one. But those are on my site. And, and then anyway, thanks to everyone who's gotten one of those. And War Chest people, and Patreon people, and YouTube members all also get their names in the end of these credits here on YouTube. So there's that. Anyway, I got some updates for you. I finished the first draft of my next novel. I'm calling it 13 Short Stories Down. It's about the guy who wrote uh, Fifty Shades of Dave in the Smoke of Fairy Tale series. He's actually written a lot of other stuff in there, but we'll get to that later as the story progresses if you haven't read ahead. Um, I still have a lot of work to do on it, um, but I am shooting for a January or February release date, so it's coming soon. And two, I'm also starting to put stuff together for uh, Smoke Pit Fairy Tales 5 and 6's audiobooks. Now, in Smoke Pit Fairy Tales 5, there's like 10 characters, and most of them are carryover. Also, books 5 and 6, if you combine them, they're shorter than book 4 was. So I'm going to be doing the casting for those at the same time. You know, that way I'm not bothering people around Christmas, because I am good in the head on the audiobooks. But while I am doing that, I am also going to go back and remaster books one through three. Now, I'm going to be keeping a lot of the original voices in there, and I am going to be asking some people to re-record their lines. But books one through three, I will be working on them. They're going to be low priority, because, um, you know, priority is the you know, current ones that are slated to come out. So, you know, four and five and six, and then I'll just work on one, two, and three, redoing them in my spare time. And most of it's fucking plug and play anyway, because I already got the stuff built. I just got to get new voice drop. But that is a thing that will be coming at some point soon, hopefully. Yeah, we'll see. But as of recording this video, I am still working on the uh, cutting up the scripts for books five and six. But that's 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 starting. But on that, I still have a lot of people I have to reach out to and be like, hey, come back, give me a voice. Please talk to me. I don't know why I did the Adam Sandler there. Remember when that was funny? Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, no, I'm going to be doing the casting for that here soon. And as always, I am going to be looking for new people to be part of the whole thing. And really, you know, for what we're doing, it's, it's not as hard as it sounds. Like, all you need is, like, a decent condenser microphone and somewhere quiet to record. And you can get a serviceable microphone at, uh, that's a sentence that I'm saying 14 times. You can get a decent enough microphone either on Amazon or, you know, like, Best Buy. You know, you get them on sale, usually pretty cheap. And then you need somewhere quiet to record, like, a closet full of clothes works the best. But you can also make, like, a little acoustic booth. You just need some acoustic foam and you put the microphone way back in there and you put another piece right here and talk into the little hole. It's not as hard as you think it is. Most of the time, anyway. But yeah, anyway, if you want to be part of that, um, either, you know, shoot me a DM on Instagram or Facebook or uh, shoot me an email at smokeoffairytales.com and uh, we'll get you on board. But yeah, anyway, big things are happening. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, best way to support the channel is to go grab something off smokeoffairytales.com and uh, here's your bloopers. All right. Ciao. A little bit of test, test, testing. A little, a little testicular torsion. God damn it, really? Really, it is fucking July and the fucking furnace is on. Right, the first time in a month. 
right when I sit down and fucking record for the first- God damn it. Thatch hung up a suit in the case. Uh, in its case. <clears throat> Samoon was wearing lipstick. <laughs> lipstick. Rip it and stick it. Her long, wavy hair rolled over her shoulders like a river. Like a river's water. Waters. A river's waters. Roaring off a cliff. What a sentence. They leaned down and grabbed the cigarettes that he dropped on the bench. Oh no, Thatch leaned down. Yeah. Scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. <clears throat> Forest burp. Wine sauce. Delicious. Okie dokie. This is Samum, chapter 12. Turk true. Whoop. Scrolled too far. Hold, please. Oh shit. Chapter 11. Here we go. Okay. Samum, chapter 12. Take two. Stay away from chicks like that. Seriously, though, stay away from them. Like, what the fuck, man? Stay sane. Stay safe. The waiter brought their burgers. I sound like somebody try, trying to do an American accent for the first time. And it's like, well, you guys like to emphasize your Oz, don't you? Oh, all right. Burgers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I can do a Yank accent. Car. Start the car. Burger. Yeah, burger. Nailed it. Buggers, buggers. Bugger! All right. She had lost the jeans and leather jacket and wore a dark blue shawl with a starfish pattern of the, t- uh, the, the, the black top and flowing blue skirt. She had lost the jeans and leather jacket and wore a dark blue shawl with starfish pa- uh, Starfish. Jesus. <laughs> Sometimes reading is so hard. Scrolling back to the top because I fucked up the last take. Stay away from chicks like that. Chapter 12. Take one. That I am sending to you. Thatch's mind was stooped in its tracks. Stopped. Stooped. <laughs> Whose mind has ever been stooped in its tracks, for fuck's sakes? No, seriously. Unless you're planning on fucking her and not taking it seriously, then stay the way the f- stay the fuck away from that. Guessing that's the end? Yeah, cool. Pause. <laughs>